the cross Preach redemption to a lost and dying world Welcome to Reviving Your Day with Rev. Tony Workman of the gospel of his Welcome once again to Reviving Your Day A broadcast that is dedicated to preaching the word Preaching the cross And preaching redemption to a lost and dying world. I am Brother Tony Workman, the host of Reviving Your Day, and it is my pleasure to be bringing you today God's holy, infallible, inerrant, inspired, and authoritative word. Let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you today. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what a big and mighty God you are. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that if anybody is not saved, that today would be the very day of their salvation, Lord. And I pray for those who are saved, Lord. I pray, Lord, that, that through what is about to be preached, Lord, that you would just give them a burden to take the gospel out to a lost and dying world so that, they can, so that people can find the Savior, so that people can find redemption in, in, through Jesus Christ, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would just be with me during this time Lord, give me the unction to proclaim, thus saith the Lord, and I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for what you're about to do. In Jesus' mighty and magnificent name, amen. Well, if you would, take your copy of God's Word. And by the way, God's Word is infallible. That means it will never, ever fail you. It is inspired, meaning every single word in this Bible is complete, 100% truth. And it is inerrant, meaning it has absolutely no error. It is the very words of life. So turn with me, if you would, to Isaiah chapter number 55. And we're going to read the first 13 verses. And let us read Isaiah chapter number 55, starting in verse 1. It says this, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do, we, do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and, you, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven... And returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. 
and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And here in Isaiah 55, Isaiah is writing, and he's writing to the Israelites. He's writing to God's chosen people. And here we see... Uh, 13 verses that describe what salvation is all about. Notice what it says in verse number 1. It says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. In other words, everyone that is thirsting for God can, can, have, their thirst quen can have their thirst quenched by the salvation that Jesus Christ Offers. It says, Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye come by wine and milk, without money and without price. Basically, he's saying here that salvation is free to all those who want it. It's a free gift, but make no mistake about it. It is a free gift that cost Jesus Christ everything. It cost him his blood. It cost him to die on that old rugged cross so that we might have eternal life. And that eternal life is available to all those who will call upon His name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Basically, it's, he's saying that it doesn't matter how much money you have or the lack of money that you might have. Here he's talking to some poor people, and he's saying, He that hath no money, come. In other words, it's not about money. It's not about how much you have or how much you don't have. Salvation is a gift that is available to all those who will receive it. It, it says in verse number 2, it says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. In other words, what God is saying here, and what, what He is saying through His prophet Isaiah, is He is saying that, that nothing in this world can truly satisfy. Yes, you can spend your money on, 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 on things that don't really matter, but understand that, in, that, that they will never truly satisfy. That only Jesus Christ brings true satisfaction in one's life, and only He can fill the void that is in your life. And you might be sitting there today, and you might say, Preacher, I have no hope. I, I feel like I have no hope. I want to tell you that in Christ, you do have hope. If you will just call on Him from right where you're watching, right where you're, you're standing, right where you're sitting, Jesus Christ will save you. If you will just repent of your sins and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And basically, He's saying, hearken diligently unto me. In other words, seek me. Listen unto me. Listen to what I am saying. And, and, ta and taste and see that the Lord is good. It says, eat that, that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. In other words, let your soul delight, your, delight itself in God. If, if you don't know God, Jesus wants to save you. He wants to come in and be the Lord of your life. He wants to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Notice what verse 3 says. It says, Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. In other words, he's saying, Come unto me, all oh, you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Oh, the gospel is the most important message that, that, that could be presented. And within Isaiah 55, we see that 
We all need to incline our ear to what God is saying. And we all need to incline our ear to what, the, to what the Bible says. And we all need to listen to what God says. But we must understand that if you don't know Him, you are blinded by the devil. And, and, and you don't know Jesus. And you need to turn from your wicked ways. And you need to repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ today. Because I just want to go ahead and tell you that we're not promised another day on planet earth uh, at any time we could drop dead right on the spot and then we will go into an eternity and my friend I want you to go to heaven I don't want you to go to hell so this message is for those that don't know Jesus because I truly believe that we are living in the very last days and I believe that Jesus Christ could come back at any time and, and I want as many people to go to heaven as possible. I don't want nobody to be left behind when the rapture comes. I want, I want you to go to heaven but you must listen to God and you must make a choice. You see, everybody on the face of the earth has a choice. You have a choice either to accept the good news of Jesus Christ or you have a choice to reject the good news of Jesus Christ. And there are many today that are in danger of going to hell because they reject the good news of Jesus Christ. Why would anyone want to reject the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why would anybody want to turn away from salvation, this, the gift that Jesus Christ offers? You see, Jesus Christ went, went to Calvary just for you. If you were the only person that ever lived on the face of this earth, Jesus Christ would die for you. Amen. And I'm so glad that he didn't leave me out. I'm so glad that he died for me. I'm so glad that he saved my soul and he put a new song in my heart and a pep in my step for the king. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. He'll give you everything that your heart desires because Jesus Christ is everything. He's the only thing that matters. Like I said before, the things of this world do not matter. Only Jesus. So we need to hear and our soul shall live. In other words, we need, to, we need to receive what God is saying to us today. And we need to take it into our hearts. And we need to let it resonate into our very being. And then we need to call upon the name of the Lord. If you're sitting there today in the hospital and you don't have much time to live, I want you to know that you have until your very last breath to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you will just call on Him in your time of desperation, I promise you that Jesus Christ can and will save you. And notice what He says. He goes on to say, Here in your soul shall live in verse 3. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to make an everlasting covenant with my people. And here he's talking to Israel. But we, can all, we will also see later on in this text that God made a way for Gentiles to be saved. And guess what? I'm a Gentile. And, and I'm thankful that he not only came to save the Jew, but he also came to save the Gentile. And, and, and I'm thankful for his saving power. And notice what it says in verse 4. He says, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. You see, he has given us a leader. He has given us a commander. And that leader and that commander is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, He's the fulfillment of this prophecy. He's the fulfillment of the Word of God. He came and He, and he shed His blood. And it is finished, He cried, on Calvary. And it is finished. And everything that He came to this world to do 2,000 years ago, He accomplished because of the cross. And He rose again from the dead three days later. And He is sitting on the right hand of the Father. And He is making intercession for you. And He's praying for you. And He longs for you to come to know Him as your Savior and as your Lord. Amen. 
And notice what he says in verse 5. He says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. And nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Here he is talking about the, the Gentile nations. And he is saying that they too will come to God. They too will come and run because of the Lord and because of His because of his loving kindness. The Bible says that his loving kindness is better than life itself. And Jesus is a God of loving kindness. He is a God of passion, of compassion. And he is a God that loves even the worst of sinners. He loves you right where you're sitting. You might say, preacher, you don't understand what I've done. I've done so many horrible things in my life. Well, I want you to know that Jesus Christ will forgive all of your sins. That's what He came to do. He came to forgive the sins of the world. He came to forgive sinners. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And He came to justify, to sanctify. And one day we will be glorified. What does justify mean? It means just as if I never sinned. And when you are saved. You are justified. It is just as if you had never sinned. Jesus Christ wipes the slate clean. And I'm so thankful that He's still in the saving business. And they're still saving souls all over the United States of America and all over the world. People are coming to know Jesus Christ. And that's a great thing. Notice verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord. Well, he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Basically, we, hear, we see here the call to repentance. And there is a call to repent. And we must repent of our sins. We must confess our sins to God and admit that we have missed the mark. Admit that we have transgressed a holy God. And basically what tra uh, transgression means is missing the mark. It means, literally it means sin. And anything against God is sin. It could be, uh, it could be lying. It could be loving money more than you do God. The love of money is the root of all evil. It could be uh, loving TV more than you do God. It could mean loving shopping. It could, be, it could mean loving football more than you love God. And yes, we live in football country. And by the way, go Florida State Seminoles. <laughs> I love the Noles. And I'm sure you have your favorite team. But the point of the matter is, if you put anything before God, that is sin. And that is what we must forsake. We must get our priorities right. We must turn to God. We must seek the Lord. And we must seek His face. You see, I, I, think, I, I think we must get to the realization and we must fall on our face. And we must admit that we have missed the mark. Only then will we see a true heaven sent. Revival. No repentance equals no revival. But basically what it's saying here is let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. Let him come back to the Lord. Let him return unto the Lord. And that's what America needs to do. It needs to return back. Unto the Lord. We need to return to our first love. We need to return to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And my friends, once we do that, the Bible says that He will have mercy upon Him. He will have mercy upon those who repent and turn from their sins. Oh, God is a God of abundant mercy. And God is a God of abundant grace. And we don't deserve His mercy. And we don't deserve deserve His grace. But when we call upon Him in genuine repentance, then we shall receive His mercy. And oh, what a, what a great time that is when we receive His grace and we receive His mercy. And it says, And to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. 
basically what pardon means. It means basically this. You're standing before the judge. And you're as guilty as guilty can be. And everybody knows you're guilty. But the judge says you are forgiven. And basically he wipes the slate clean. That's exactly what Jesus Christ does when he forgives. He forgives and he forgets. He casts it as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered no more. He's a God that will abundantly pardon. Yes, I feel like preaching a little bit in here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And oh, by the way, it's okay if you want to praise the Lord. Bible says let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I'm telling you he's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise because He's God and because He's provided such a great salvation. And He's a God that will abundantly pardon even the worst of worst sinners. And He's a God that pardoned me. So the least I can do is shout. The least I can do is praise His name. The least I can do is get a little excited in our Lord Jesus Christ. After all, we get excited about football and we hoop and we holler like a bunch of Comanche Indians. The least we can do is get a little excited in Jesus for what he's done. Amen. Praise the Lord. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Oh, God is so much superior. He's so much greater than mankind. And, and, and he, he's, he, he, is, he is so Worthy and so glorious and so far above all humanity that we must understand that there are sometimes situations that happen and we don't understand. But God's ways are not our ways. And His thoughts are not our thoughts. And He's always working in the lives of believers. And He's always using the trial and using the tribulation in our life to mold us into His image. And He might be using that trial and that tribulation in that lost person's life to get their attention so that they will call upon Him and be saved. Amen. It says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it, make it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth in other words it will not return void it, it, the word will accomplish what God pleases. In other words, what He wants it to accomplish, it will accomplish. So when the Word is preached, when the Word is taught, it will never return back void because God has anointed His Word and His Word is inspired. Theonoustos in the Greek. It literally means a God-breathed Word. And we have a powerful Word. Yes, it's powerful. It's powerful to save from the uttermost to the gutter most. It's powerful to do that which God wants it to accomplish. It is powerful. And it says, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. In other words, His Word is going to prosper. His Word is going to do the job. You see, it seems right now that the, that the White House is having problems doing the job. It seems that every other house is having problems doing the job. But I got news for you. God's Word can and will do the job. And it will do the job well done. And it will prosper. Hallelujah. And notice what happens as a result. It says, for ye shall go out with joy. Woo! And I'm so thankful that joy is not dependent 
upon circumstances. And I'm so glad that when the Word does what it's, uh, what it's set forth to do, and the result is it brings joy. And that's what happens when people are revived. They experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. And they experience peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that is with you in the time of the storm. Yes, it is sweet peace. It is the peace of God that comes upon a person when they're doing His will and when they're paying attention to what God's Word is saying. And if you don't know Christ, that is what He will give you. He will give you joy. Because without Christ, it is hopeless. Without Christ, it is miserable. Without Christ, it is an eternity in hell to look forward to. My friends, do you want joy and peace in your life? If you don't know Christ, then I encourage you to make Him the Lord and Savior of your life. And if you do know Christ, we need to get serious about serving God. And we need to get serious about fulfilling the Great Commission. And, and if we are saved, we need to be the most joyous people on the face of the earth. We ought to be the most joyous. We ought not to walk around sad and with a depressed look on our face. We ought to have joy. And my friends, Jesus Christ is the giver of joy. So ask Him to restore your joy. Ask Him to save you if you don't know Him. You know, what you need to do is you need to repent of your sins. And you need to turn to Christ. It goes on to say, it says, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. In other words, even the heavens and the earth declare the glory of God. And it says, even they praise His glorious name. All of creation is a testament to a holy God. And to a, a, a wonderful, mighty God that can and will save if you will put your faith and trust in Him. He's a God who will abundantly pardon. So I ask you, if you have made Christ the Lord of your life today, would you please call the number on the screen? My number's on the screen. Send me an email. And then if you just want me to pray for you, I'd be glad to pray for you. Call me be glad to talk with you. I'll be glad to pray with you. I love you. I thank God for you. I pray that you will continue to watch Reviving Your Day. You can hook up with me on Facebook. I'd love to connect with you. Just be an encouragement to you. I'm Tony Workman on Facebook. Uh, you just look my name up. And there I am. And, uh, and, then I, and, and if you want to donate to this program, I would be glad to accept any Donation that you deem necessary. Again, thank you for watching this program. I pray that God will richly and abundantly bless you. May Jesus richly bless you. And may He truly revive your day in Jesus' name. God bless. Thank you for watching Reviving Your Day with Brother Workman. Let Brother Workman hear from you. You may contact him at 478-972-2840 or thmswrk at aol.com. <laughs>